You are listening to ChartingWealth.com for Friday the 24th of June 2016. We are traveling today, so we may have some noise in the background. We apologize for that in advance, but we're doing all we can to bring you these market updates in a timely manner. Sometimes the conditions aren't always perfect. Thanks for bearing with us. Let's jump right in. IYY is the Dow Jones iShares U.S. Total Market Index Fund. It tracks the entire market. We always start with our two-day chart. This is IYY as the symbol. What do we see going on? Well, we have a spinning top at the end of this two-day candle that ended up forming on the third on Thursday the 23rd. Well, what do we have going on? Prior to that on the 21st we had a big green up candle with a long wick above it. Now we have lots and lots of indecision partly based on the Brexit vote and how that's going to turn out and those of you who have of course been following us all week, particularly listening to our weekly review and forecast, you know that we told you to be on the lookout for lots of uncertainty. Well, that's exactly the way the market wrapped up the day, technically up 1.36% for the day. Our two-day candle showing lots of indecision. We don't have a crossover yet going up, and we have the derivative oscillator losing a little bit of energy. We do see the blue MACD line moving toward the signal line, but no cross, no confirmed crossover. Now, if we look at our four-hour chart, what do we see? Well, on the four-hour chart, we see the backup continuing that we talked about starting on the 21st of June. After all the prior down movement, the market slid sideways after that bump up on the morning of the 20th, and then it started moving up again during the course of Thursday morning up through Thursday afternoon. If we get a rotation back over, crossing going down on the MACD on the short chart, that of course is your time to enter into a continuing down trade on the large chart, the two-day chart. We'll wait and see if that happens. Of course, we let the charts lead us. We don't tell the charts what to do. Anyone who thinks that will lose his money in the market very quickly. Next, we look at the S&P 500 as represented by SPY. Of course, that's the 500 big companies, lots of the volume in the market. What do we see going on there? We see a second green up candle, not as much indecision on the S&P 500 as we saw on the total market. We have two green up candles having breached prior to the forming of this new candle. We had a breach of the two-day trend line at the close of actually the last candle on the 21st. Derivative oscillators losing energy. MACD is moving toward the signal line, but no confirmed crossover yet. What occurs with that Brexit vote, we're going to see how that plays out in the market. Now, those of you thinking, what do I do? How do I know which way it's going to go? You don't know. And as we teach, when you don't know, you either get out of the market or you insure yourself against losses. And there are ways, complicated ways to do that. Easiest way is to get out of the market, is to not take that risk. Take your profit or your small loss and get out wait for a better time to trade if the trade didn't happen as fast as you had expected it to. Always the safest bet. All right, now we're going to look at what happened intraday on the S&P 500. What do we see? Well, S&P 500 crossed over going up on the afternoon of the 21st and has continued to move up. Had a couple of little dojis thrown in there, but throughout the course of the day on the 23rd, continue to move up in the morning and the afternoon, just like we saw on the total market. So that backup is underway, and if it rolls back over going down on the short chart, boom, you look to get in and make money on that down move. Don't forget, they're inverse funds with the S&P 500 that you can find that actually go up when the S&P goes down. Isn't that cool, giving you choices to make money if you can read a chart when the market's going up or down, not just up? Okay, next let's go to the Qs. We're going to look at the two-day chart on that. The Qs, of course, is the NASDAQ 100. We had nice, beautiful three down candles all the way to the 17th. That is from the 13th until the 17th of June. Then we had the market slide sideways, and it was up technically today one point. When I say today, I mean Thursday the 23rd. It was up 1.42%. We have a 
uh, a green spinning top uh, is the way the candle finished up above the broken now two-day trend line. Still don't have a crossover going up. Derivative oscillator lost just a little bit of its energy. So again, pay attention to what happens in the queues. If we look at our four-hour chart, what do we see going on with the NASDAQ 100? We see how it slid sideways for quite a while, never got as high as where the market bumped up to on the morning of the 20th of June, but it did pass that th uh, the morning on Thursday and then up even higher on Thursday afternoon. So again, that backup is fully underway. If we see the markets roll back over and cross over going down, that would be the entry point into a down move. Again, it may or may not occur. We let the charts lead us. This may be the makings of greater up moves in the market for a while. We'll see. We haven't had a rotation over yet on our two-day chart. Remember, we are trend followers. We do what the charts tell us, not what we think is going to happen or what we hope will happen. That's how you lose your ass in the market. Now, lastly, let's take a look at gold. What's gold up to on our two-hour chart? Well, we've got a slow upload. While that's happening, and hopefully we'll have the internet not screw us over on this, uh, while that's happening with gold, let me tell you about how you can get our How to Read a Stock Chart video and the information that we use as far as our layout goes at freestockcharts.com. How do you get that? Well, you go and you sign up for our newsletter. By signing up for our newsletter, you will get our How to Read a Stock Chart video, the link to that, and our free charting layout from freestockcharts.com and we are having problems it looks like gold is just refusing to load up for us it is not the fault of anything but the internet a uh, crappy internet because the good folks at freestockcharts.com never let us down they are amazing so we just don't have the internet letting us load up where we're traveling from. Well, I apologize. Gold is down for the day 0.67%. And again, ah, there we go. We got it. Now, what's happening with gold? We have two two-day candles getting close to a crossing over, going down potentially. Still call it as an up move, but if we see a crossover going down in the MACD and the signal line, then of course we would then have a confirmed down move in gold. It's been four days since we broke the two-day trend line. So when we look at what's going on on the four-hour chart, we can see the four-hour chart crossed over going down back on the 20th and has continued to move down throughout the course of the day. We'll see if indeed all that downward movement finally flips over the two-day chart. Uh, as far as the MACD goes, if that does, we'll wait for a pullback and then try to get into an inverse move on gold. Otherwise, if we see a rotation back over and gold is sort of bottomed out for the last two and a half days or so, right around the 120 mark, we will, one, uh, 121 mark, we will just wait and see. We will be guided by what the charts tell us. Thank you so much for being with us. Appreciate your patience as we travel today. We love to hear from you. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and of course, iTunes. Please subscribe to the podcast. Give us a nice five-star rating. My last plea is, would you go to YouTube, which is where all our videos are being recorded and played, would you go to YouTube and give us a, the, the best gift that you can give us there, a subscription. If you subscribe to us and you just click a button, that's all, you become a subscriber. What that does for us, as soon as we reach the 1,000 mark, we can start doing proprietary broadcasts for you, and we can't wait to be able to do that. So you want to help us out. I know we have thousands of people listen to us every week. We're number seven on the charts at iTunes, and we appreciate all your support there for Stock Market Podcasts. So thanks so much. We'll continue to try to deliver quality material to you. Tell us what you need. We've been putting a lot of training up lately. You can find all that at chartingwealth.com. We appreciate you. We're here for you. Let us hear from you as to what else we can do for you. God bless. Take care from chartingwealth.com.